Thank you all for joining us here today. I'm very excited um, to be here and glad you could be here as well. I want to uh, thank all of the staff uh, and the Attorney General for joining us. Today we are announcing some exciting news about the city's Community Alternative Response Emergency Services Program, which is better known as CARES. You'll recall that we launched the CARES program at the Willie Street Fire Station on September 1st of 2021. And CARES teams made up of a paramedic and a crisis worker help residents experiencing behavioral health crises as an alternative to dispatching a police officer. The CARES program takes a patient-centered approach to 911 behavioral health emergencies. The focus of CARES is to de-escalate, to assess and treat patients' needs on scene, and then to link them to additional behavioral health resources in the community as needed. As of yesterday, CARES has responded to 674 calls, bringing critical help to those experiencing crises in this year of growth and innovation. And today, I am pleased to announce that the CARES program has expanded to include a second unit housed in a second station right here at 2120 Fish Hatchery Road. The first CARES unit will continue to operate out of Fire Station 3 on Willie Street where the program launched. This expansion will increase the number of calls that CARES is able to respond to, and this location, particularly being so close to the Beltline, will also help us to get to patients across town and shorten the response times to the west and south sides of Madison. Starting July 25th, the city anticipates that both CARES units will be operating Monday through Friday with expanded daytime hours when patients need us most. Early data on the CARES programs show indicators of success. When we look at the patients that were served in the first three months of the CARES operations and we follow their connection to community behavioral health services for three to six months after that, 40% of CARES patients were connected or reconnected with stable services such as case management, inpatient, outpatient, residential, and detox services. Another 18% were connected with acute emergency services such as Journey Mental Health Emergency Services Unit, the Hospital Emergency Services, or EMS. These results indicate that the majority of CARES patients are getting connected or reconnected to the behavioral health services that they need. I am really excited for the continued growth and success of this innovative program and the support that CARES offers to our community. I want to thank the Madison Fire Department, our Public Health Department, our partners at Journey Mental Health and Dane County 911 Center for their continued work to make this project a success. If you or someone you know needs the CARES team due to behavioral health emergency, call 911 and ask for them to be dispatched. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce our state's Attorney General, Josh Call, who has shown strong support for this type of innovative approach and recognize the importance of CARES in diverting calls from the criminal justice system. Thank you, for Attorney, Attorney General, for joining us today. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor. Thank you to everybody who's here today. Um, first, I want to congratulate uh, the City of Madison on expanding the successful CARES program uh, and continuing to work to provide as effective as possible a response to uh, mental health crisis situations. Um, I also specifically want to thank the people who are doing the work with the CARES program day in and day out. So 
thank you to all of you for the work uh, that you're doing to help make uh, this community safer. Um, you know, one of the topics that I hear the most about from law enforcement officers in Wisconsin is the need to reform our broken emergency detention system. Uh, across the state, uh, there is a lack of resources to fund crisis response. And often, law enforcement officers find themselves transporting individuals in crisis long distances, frequently to uh, the Winnebago Mental Health Institute, when individuals are in crisis. Um, now, we have brought together uh, not only law enforcement, but community leaders, advocates for people with mental illness, uh, and others to identify some possible solutions. We uh, announced some of those solutions last year. Uh, but one of the solutions that, that we identified, and that we've seen some innovative programs uh, now, including the one here in Madison, are our mental health crisis response teams like the CARES teams. Um, these help in, in a few different ways. First, these kinds of programs make sure that the response to a mental health crisis is, effective, is as effective as possible. While we're fortunate to have a lot of law enforcement officers who have critical incident team training, having a mental health professional respond to a crisis allows an individual in crisis uh, to be connected with services as quickly as possible. Uh, and it also allows for continuous follow-up care so that when an individual is in crisis, they don't just have a one-time interaction with a law enforcement officer when it's necessary for public safety, but a trained health professional can follow up and make sure that that individual doesn't end up in a new mental health crisis. Uh, this also frees up our law enforcement officers' time so that they can spend a larger share of their time uh, investigating the most serious offenses, including violent crimes and working to protect public safety. So these kinds of programs are a win-win for our communities. They lead to better uh, mental health outcomes and better services for people in mental health crisis, and they free up more resources for our law enforcement agencies and for our criminal justice system. Every community in Wisconsin should be able to have the kinds of programs that you're seeing here with the CARES program. Uh, and in the Safer Wisconsin plan that I announced back in November, uh, we have proposed a significant investment uh, for grant programs for crisis response teams. These kinds of programs could be available in communities across the state. There are a few where they're available now, uh, but often communities don't have the resources to ensure that we're providing services that are as effective as possible and that we're freeing up our law enforcement resources to the extent possible. So I continue to call on our legislature to take up not only Safer Wisconsin, but in particular to provide increased funding for mental health crisis response teams. Uh, and again, I want to congratulate uh, the city of Madison. This is uh, a step towards a safer community and a community that provides more effective services to people in crisis. So with that, let me turn it back to the mayor for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General, for your support and your advocacy. We'd be happy to take a few questions if there are any. Uh, actually, the data show and, and uh, the press release is available to you now that adding a second team um, actually has increased the number of calls that we're able to go to, and I am sure that when we increase the hours uh, that we'll see those filled up as well. Each call on average takes about an hour for the CARES team because they do take that patient-centered approach. Um, and they need to be able to spend time with folks um, and make sure that they're getting the help that they need, but then also getting connected to the resources that they might need. And so I think when you look at the call volume over time, it's pretty clear that this second team is not only needed, but it's also possible we may need more in the future. This is something that we're tracking very carefully. It's very important to me that we take a data-informed approach to providing this service. And so just like when we started this program, we looked at where the highest number of these types of calls were during the day, geographically, and across the week, and we centered our service hours on those times. We will continue to track that and make sure that we are right-sizing this service for our community and our community's needs. So it's, imp it's important to understand that primarily CARES is dispatched through the 911 center, right? So the, we've worked with the folks in the 911 center so that when they receive a behavioral health call that's nonviolent, that they will dispatch the CARES team instead of a different resource. 
Um, so that's how most folks are going to interact with the CARES team. As I mentioned, though, if you or a loved one or someone in your orbit is experiencing a behavioral health crisis and does want the CARES team, you should call 911 and ask for the CARES team to be dispatched. One of the things that we'll look at going forward is making sure that we, again, are right-sizing the types of calls that CARES is dispatched for. Uh, we started out you know, wanting to make sure that we were being a little conservative on that front, and I think uh, as we come into having a year under our belt, uh, we'll be looking that at that again and trying to determine if there are more calls that should be dispatched to CARES versus other resources. Other questions? I'm sorry? Che, do you want to speak to the staffing levels? This is Assistant Fire Chief Chase Dedman. Hi there. Um, so for the, the first team that we had in service, we have two community paramedics and two crisis workers in order for them to cover a full, right, five days a week, 10 hours a day. Um, and so now with the second team, we've hired two more community paramedics and two more crisis workers. And one team is one single paramedic and one crisis worker at a time. But in order for us to make sure that we keep the team on the streets continually, when they have vacation days, sick days, trainings, and everything else, we need to have the extra staff for that. And if I could really quick just address the, the call volume question. Um, in the last three months, we've seen an average of 5.3 calls in an eight-hour period. So, you, so we know that the call volume is picking up over time. Yeah, the, the, yeah, so um, it's happened a handful of times where the CARES team has needed to call law enforcement in. And when we look at the outcomes, basically like what happens at the end of the call, law enforcement has needed to transport patients that CARES has gone to first 2% of the time. So the 911 center is doing a really good job of dispatching out the right resource to the right problem. But as we all know, in emergency services, things can change from the initial call into where you get there. But as of right now, um, you know, the CARES workers can tell you they fortunately haven't been put in an incredibly dangerous situation. And when they've needed law enforcement, they've gotten them relatively quickly. Is there an average call such as uh, substance abuse or what is the average CARES? Call? Yeah, there really isn't an average one other than a behavioral health emergency. But I can tell you that probably about 20% of the calls are check welfare or check person calls that, that the police department would have normally been going on. Um, other than that, it, it can range anywhere from, you know, people that have known existing mental health issues to folks that are having the very first behavioral issue that they've ever had. Um, about 60% uh, of the folks that we've seen have been seen by Journey Mental Health previously. So um, we do know that a lot of the folks that we're with have some sort of history and they're already in a system, which really makes our partnership with Journey Mental Health uh, a fantastic partnership because a lot of those folks already have care plans that are in the Journey Mental Health system so we can see what their history is and understand a better path forward. Have you uh, had any shortages or noticed any shortages in facility beds and if so, does that create a challenge for trying to give people experiencing these mental health crises the treatment that they need? Yes, absolutely. There, there's a shortage of beds everywhere. Um, shortage of beds and detox. Uh, Dane County right now does not have a 24-7 mental health triage center. And, and that, that, that is um, something that is being planned right now and something that will be um, really helpful to us and to the citizens more importantly. But yeah, hospitals will tell you that they're short on beds. Um, you name the facility and they're pretty, pretty well short as far as rooms and beds go. Let the Attorney General speak to that Sorry. Well. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll just I'll add to that. I, I mentioned before that we had talked to law enforcement about some of the challenges they face and brought a group together. One of the things, in addition to the, these kinds of crisis response programs that we need, is to have um, uh, more varied types of care. Often when people end up in mental health crises, they end up either in emergency detention or without care. Um, so having a continuum of care that involves things like peer support programs, um, more intermediate care so that it's not a secure environment, but they can, people can receive uh, medical intervention. That kind of system is one that is, is better matched to the kind of uh, to the current understanding that, that doctors have for mental health crises and is one that I, I hope we will see the state invest in so that the work that folks like Che and others do uh, has the kind of support from the, the hospital infrastructure that, that it needs to have. Any last questions? All right, thank you all very much for being here. I appreciate it. I think uh, we'd be available to do one-on-one -on -one if you need it. Thanks again for coming.